Hello students, I welcome you in today's session of physics and in physics as you know very well in the uh, our three five previous lectures we had covered out most of the topics of this chapter. This is your chapter number 11 and today we are going to discuss about the consequences of escape velocity. Fine. In the lecture number 5 we had already covered what is escape velocity and escape energy. Clear? I hope you understand it very well. Now today we are going to discuss this one. So first we take talk about the absence of atmosphere on the moon. What happened? At the moon surface the value of escape velocity is about 2.38 km per second. Clear? So at the temperature of the moon the root mean square speed of the gas molecule is more than this value of escape velocity. So you can see here that V RMS means root mean square velocity of hydrogen atom is 2.5 km per second. So the gas molecule have therefore uh, been escaped from the surface of the moon. Hence there is no atmosphere on the surface of moon. Now we talk about black holes. What are black holes? You can see here the second one. So these are the objects having very high density so that escape velocity from these objects become greater than or equal to the speed of light. So thus even the light particle cannot escape out of it fine, leading to a dark space. So if the light is sent to such objects nothing will return back. From an, uh, for an object to be the black body you can see here root 2 gm by r is greater than or equal to speed of light. Clear? So you can write this expression also r is equal to or less, uh, less than or equal to 2 gm by c square or the black holes are very tiny objects. Clear? Now this is the important topic orbital speed and period of revolutions of satellites. I hope you are uh, know very well what are satellites. Just as pre, uh, various planets revolve around the sun in the same way few celestial bodies, celestial means heavenly bodies revolve around these planets. So these bodies are called satellites. For example, moon revolves around the earth in a nearly circular orbit. In the same way, earth is a planet and moon is a satellite of the earth. So the mass of the earth is nearly 80 times the mass of the moon. Therefore, although earth itself revolves around the sun, but to study the motion of the moon around the earth, the earth can be treated to be remain stationary. Clear? Now we we'll discuss about what is orbital speed of satellite. So when a satellite such as moon revolve in a circular orbit around the earth, a centripetal force acts upon the satellite. I hope you know very well in the uh, chapter of uniform circular motion. I told you about the centripetal acceleration, centrifugal acceleration, clear. So here you can see any revolving body around any objects always there is a centripetal force or acceleration exists there. So this force is the gravitational force exerted by the earth on the satellite and where from where the centripetal force comes out? It comes out due to the gravitational force of attraction over the body. So you can see here in this figure number 13 <coughs> this one a satellite of mass small m is revolving around the earth with a speed v0 in a circular orbit of radius r. So the centripetal force on the satellite is how much you know very well mv square by r where v0 you can see here this is the orbital velocity. Now let us suppose the mass of the earth is me you can see here we suppose the mass is equal to how much me. The gravitation force exerted by the earth on the satellite equals to how much? You also know the gravitational force of attraction gme m by r square where g is the gravitational constant. So as the gravitational force provides the required centripetal force so you, we can write here the force of attraction due to the earth is equal to centripetal force which is your mv square by r. Fine. So you can see here the small m and small m are cancelled out and the uh, relations comes out to be gme is equal to v0 square into r. Fine. So if you uh, find out the value if you so you can see that v0 square equals to gme by r. This is the orbital velocity or you can also write it like this v0 is equal to root 2 uh, under root gme by r. This is the orbital velocity. Let us suppose re be the radius of the earth and h the height of the satellite above the earth's surface then the distance of the satellite from the center of the earth will be equal to how much r is equal to re minus h this one. Now substituting this value of a small r in the above equation we have v0 is equal to how much you will get here uh, v0 equals to gme root under root re minus h clear. 
So, if the acceleration due to gravity on the earth surface is g, then this relation changes to you know very well there is a relation of acceleration due to gravity and gravitational constant gme m into re square or gme equals to gre square this one. So, we put the in place of gme we can write here. So, this orbital velocity uh, uh, the relation is with the acceleration due to gravity changes. So, this is your equation 1 and this is your equation 2 fine. So, from the equation 1 and 2 gives the speed of revolution of the satellite in its orbit. So, it is evident from these equation the speed of a satellite depend only upon its height above the earth surface fine. Why? Because here you can see g is the constant radius of earth is also constant. So, greater is the height of the satellite above the earth surface is smaller is the speed of the satellite fine. So, because of the speed of a satellite does not depend upon the mass of the satellite this is important one. So, therefore, two satellites of different masses revolving in the same orbits around the earth surface have same speed. So, if the satellite is orbiting very close to the earth surface of the earth then we consider here h is equals to very very smaller than the radius of the earth. So, what happened then h is negligible compared to the radius of the earth and we put here in this formula h is equals to 0. So, this comes uh, changes to like this v is equals to g m e by r e or you can also write v naught equals to root g r e fine. So, after putting the value of acceleration due to gravity and the radius of earth you can easily find out the value of orbital velocity. You can see here the speed of the satellite revolving very close to the earth surface is nearly 8 kilometer per second. This is the orbital velocity or, or speed of satellite which is revolving earth close to the earth surface. I hope it is clear. Now, we will discuss about what is the period of revolution. So, period I hope you know the time period, the time taken by a body to complete one revolution around the earth or any planet. So, the time capital T be the time of one revolution of the satellite. So, you know very well t is equals to 2 pi r by v naught clear where 2 pi is the total circumference and v naught is the orbital velocity. So, in place of r we can also write this formula like r e plus h if it is moving at uh, the at a height at a certain height fine. Now, what uh, we will did here you can see that substituting we put the value of v naught clear from the above expression we put the value of v naught. So, this relation changes to like this t is equals to 2 pi r e plus h upon g m e by r e plus h to the power half clear or you can also write this expression t is equals to 2 pi root r e plus h whole q upon g m e and you know it very well there is a relation of acceleration due to gravity and gravitational constant means g m e is equals to g times of r e square. So, we can write it like this t is equals to 2 pi in the root r e plus h whole q by g r e square. Now, there is an assumption if earth is supposed to be a sphere of mean density is rho fine then the mass of the earth is given by you know very well there is a relation between density is equals to mass upon volume fine. So, from this relation mass is equals to density into volume clear. So, you know uh, you also know the value of or formula of volume of a sphere which is 4 upon 3 pi r q. So, we uh, from that formula we write this expression and find out the mass of the earth which is 4 upon 3 pi r e q and into rho width where rho is the mean density. So, if we put this value of mass in the above expression clear for so what you get is you get the time period is 3 pi r e plus h whole q under root g rho r e q. I hope you understand it. So, from the equation above three equation you can see here this is your equation number 5. We put the mass of a sphere in equation 5 that is why we get this relation this is 5th this is 6th and this is 6th 7th clear. So, equation 5th 6th 7th gives the period of revolution of satellites revolving at a height a small h above the surface of earth. It is evident from these equations the period of revolution of satellite depend only upon its height above the earth surface. So, greater is the height of satellite above the earth surface greater is its period of revolution fine. That is why which uh, moon which is at a height of uh, this much above the earth complete one revolution of the earth nearly 27 days. While an artificial satellite revolving near the earth surface complete 10 to 20 revolutions in a day 
here you can see if a satellite is orbiting very close to the earth surface then the height is considered to be very very small as compared to the radius of the earth. So, in place of h we can put 0 in equation 5, 6 and 7. So, you get the time period like this t is equal to 2 pi root r e cube by g m e or with respect to the acceleration due to gravity the time period is t is equal to 2 pi root r e by g clear or you can also write if you put the mass in this equation number 9. So, this changes to t is equal to root 3 pi by g rho clear. Now, if you know the value of radius of earth find and acceleration due to gravity. So, you can easily find out the time period which comes out to be 84 minutes. So, the satellite revolving very close to earth surface has a period of revolution about how much 84 minutes. This is the important one you should remember and its speed is nearly how much this thing we had already uh, solved out in the above topic 8 kilometer per second. I hope it is clear. Here you can see that calculation of mass of earth, how you calculate the mass of earth, this one. So, we can calculate the mass of earth by knowing the period of revolution t of an earth satellite from the equation phase which we had already described in above topic. So, from there the time periods comes out to be like this and its mass is changes to this fine. So, if the radius r e minus h of the orbit of satellite and its speed or period of revolution is t is known then from the above equation the mass of the earth can be calculated. Similarly, if the period of revolution of a planet around the sun and the distance of the planet from the sun are known, then mass of the sun can be calculated, fine. Now, you can see here calculation of height of a satellite above the earth surface. If we move or go above the earth surface, then what happens? You have to uh, add the height also in the time period, clear or you can find out the value of r e minus h whole cube is equal to t square g r e square by 4 pi square fine. So, finally, you will get uh, the height equals to how much this one I hope it uh, you understand it. So, thus knowing the t and g and r e the height of the satellite above the earth surface can be calculated using this relation I hope you understand it. Now, we will discuss about the geostationary satellite or artificial and polar setup fine. So, here you can see that this is the topic it has been established above that the period of revolution of a satellite depends upon its height above the earth surface here this is from this relation we can say that. So, thus if the height of an artificial satellite above the earth surface be such that its period of revolution is exactly equal to the period of revolution which is 24 hours of the axial motion of the earth then the satellite would appear stationary over a point on the earth's equator. So, it would be a synchronous with earth spin you can see here the earth is rotating about its axis. Such a satellite is known as geostationary satellites or geosynchronous satellites fine I hope you understand it. The condition for a satellite to be geostationary this is the important one the first one is the angular velocity or the time period of the satellite should be same as that of the earth clear. Now, the second one the direction of rotation of the satellite should be the same as that of the earth anti clockwise from west to east. Now, the third one the orbital plane of the satellite should be coplanar with the equatorial plane of the earth figure number this one you can see here. The orbit of geostationary satellite is called parking orbit this is this important one. So, in order to calculate the height of the geostationary satellite we use the following expression for the period of revolution of satellite at a height a small h above the earth surface which is comes out to be t equals to 2 pi root r e plus h whole cube by g r e square where r e you no variable is the radius of the earth. So, from uh, the above relation we can find out this expression and this one also clear. So, if you know the time period of the satellite radius of the earth the acceleration due to gravity then you calculate the height. So, this is the orbital radius of a geostationary satellite the height of the satellite above the earth surface is given by this. So, it so finally comes out 35830 kilometer. Thus for a satellite to appear stationary it must be placed in the orbit around each at a height of 35830 kilometers above the equator this is often called the parking orbit you have to uh, remember this term. So, artificial satellite used for telecasting are placed in parking orbits. The orbital speed of the geostationary satellite you can also find the orbital speed with this formula 
and which has comes out to be 3.1 km per second. Now we will discuss about what are polar satellites. So polar satellites belong to another class of satellites, they are low altitude satellites. They orbit the poles of the earth in a north south direction, whereas the earth is spin around its axis clear in an east west direction. So hence polar satellite can scan the whole the surface of the earth. Since the weight of the height of the polar satellite is completely much smaller which is about 500 to 800 kilometer. So camera fix on it can view only a small strips of the earth in one orbit. Adjacent strips are viewed in the next orbit. Thus the whole earth can view strip by strip. Satellite used for monitoring weather and environment and the spy satellites are put in the low orbits up to 5 to 100 to 800 kilometer. The Indian earth resource satellites are polar satellites this one. So this is <coughs> the polar satellite. Now this one is the optional uh, launching of artificial satellites. I am skipping this topic. You did it properly. If you have any doubt, ask me in the comment section. And this is the weightless, weightlessness of satellite. This is the also op optional. Further, you can see here energy of an orbiting satellite. This is also an optional sub topic. So I am missing all this. So from this you can see here this is the end of the chapter. And if you have any ask me in the comment section. So from this I am winding the session. Thank you class. Thank you very much.